Hi, I'm Joseph Gerber. I have two cats and a dog, and I want to help you get a job using SQL. In this video, we'll go through four SQL questions you're bound to encounter during a technical interview. While these problems are on the easy side, it's still important that you bring along your interviewer. You want to show your interviewer your thought process. It's okay if you don't have enough time to solve the problem. Interviewers care more about how you solve problems in general than whether you can solve this specific problem. So during an interview, remember to take your time and describe each step to your interviewer. We'll be using Strata Scratch for our SQL exercises. Strata Scratch is a platform that helps you prepare for technical interviews. Every problem in this video will be available to you on Strata Scratch. With that, let's jump right in. Let's start by looking at the Strata Scratch platform. In the top left, we have drop downs for the database, schema, and table, and below that, we have access to the Strata Scratch educational content. This is where you'll be able to select any one of the Strata Scratch problems or have one randomly selected for you so that you can practice for an interview. For interview question one, we're going to solve this problem. Given the Google File Store table, our goal will be to query all the draft files that contain the word optimism. Let's start by looking at the table. It, looking for keywords from the question, I can see that some of the file names contain the word draft and some of the contents contain the word optimism. This is a good chance to ask the interviewer some questions. It's always a good idea to ask the interviewer questions because it helps you solve the problem and it shows them your thought process. A good question in this case would be, where in the contents is the word optimism located? Is that the beginning, middle, or end of the string? Even if it seems obvious from looking at the table that the position of optimism doesn't matter for this problem, it's still a good idea to ask these questions. Um, currently, we're making assumptions about the problem. By asking questions, we guarantee we're, as we guarantee we're answering the problem correctly and showing the interviewer that our attention to detail. Let's start writing our query. I'm going to want to select all of the columns from the SQL interviews .google file store table. Running this query, as expected, I get all the information from the table. <clears throat> now I'm going to need some way to, um, to filter the results. During an SQL interview, it's critically important that you understand the WHERE clause. Almost every interview question will involve understanding the context of the problem and describing that context as a WHERE clause. WHERE clauses work by taking an expression, something that returns true or false. For each row in the table, that expression is evaluated, and if it's true, the row is returned, and if it's false, it gets filtered out. So our goal will be to write an expression that matches the two conditions of our problem. Each file has to be a draft, and all of the contents have to contain the word optimism. Let's start with the first condition. Um, we're going to need to use some simple pattern matching. Um, in order to do that, the perfect expression is the I like expression. The I like expression works by taking the name of a column and a special pattern string, and it only returns rows that match the pattern. Pattern strings have two special characters, percent sign, which represents zero or more of any character, and underscore, which represents exactly one of any character. So this pattern will match any string starting with draft. It'll match draft, draft one, draft random characters. The only thing it won't match is something like jdraft, because that obviously doesn't start with the word draft. Now when we run our query, we should be able to, we should get a table containing all the draft files. Perfect. Now we can move on to our second condition. We're going to add an AND expression. AND expressions work by saying that the expression before me and after me has to be true for me to be true. This lets us have two conditions. Now for the second condition, which is all contents have to contain the word optimism, we, we, what we need is more simple pattern matching so we can actually use the I like expression again. The only difference is that since optimism can be in any point in the string, we need a different pattern. What we need is something that starts with zero or more um, characters, hits the word optimism, and then ends with zero or more characters. Now that we have an expression that matches both conditions of the problem, this is a valid solution to the problem. We have all the draft files contain the word optimism. Small side note, I like has a sister expression called the like expression. They're exactly the same, exactly the same with one difference. The like expression is case sensitive. So if maybe the dra all drafts had to have lowercase draft, it'd be better to use the like expression because then it would matter. Then the case would matter. In this case, 
the um in this case the case doesn't matter so i like is best for interview question two we're going to solve the print all workers who are also managers problem given the workers table and the title table our goal is to write a query that lists out all the workers that are also managers let's look at the tables in the worker table we have all the information about the worker but we don't have their job title and in the title table we have their job title listed out, but we only have a reference to the worker. We're going to need to combine these tables together. Let's start with our basic uh, query. We're going to select all columns because I don't know what we need yet. And we're going to get it from the SQL interviews dot worker table. Running this, I get all the information about the workers. Now I'm going to need to combine this with the title table. In order to do that, we're going to use a join clause. The join clause is another clause you definitely need to understand. Your interviewer is going to want to see that you have a very solid understanding about how the join clause works. The join clause works by taking the table before and after it and creating a new table that has every possible pair from both tables and then filtering that new table using an on clause. An on clause is like a where clause for joins. Let's start by joining the tables together. Because we're working with two tables, I'm going to want to name the tables. I'm going to name the workers table W for worker and the titles table T for title. This is important so we can directly reference the tables. Then I'll add my on clause and I'll set it to something that's always true so we can see how it works. Now we have a table that has the information of the worker and of their title. And we have that for every single pair of worker and title. The only problem is that we're, we only want the rows where the worker ID equals the worker reference ID. Let's expand our on clause so that's the case. So the worker dot worker ID should equal the title dot worker reference ID. Now when I run that I have a table that combines the information of the worker with their worker title. Perfect. Now we need a way to filter out only the managers. We have two options in this case. Because an on clause is like a where clause I can add an AND expression and add the condition to the on um, to the on clause. So in this case, I'd want the title dot worker title to equal the string manager. Running this, we get the table we want, but there's another option. We can leave the on clause as it is and add a where clause with our condition. So in this case, the it's the uh, it works the same way. The worker title should the worker title should equal the string manager. Uh, both of these are valid and produce the same exact result. Personally, I prefer to leave the on clause as it is and add a where clause because it makes my on clause more simple and easy to understand. Now that we um now that I have my all of my workers, I'm gonna choose the columns I want. In this case I'm gonna want the workers let's say i'm going to want the workers first name and the workers job uh, title sorry title dot job title uh and running this i should have a valid solution to the problem perfect monica and vivek are both managers for interview question three we're going to solve the list employees with the same salary problem for this problem we're given the worker table and asked to list out every work every pair of workers that has the same salary. Uh, let's start by looking at the table. We see we have all the information we're going to need to solve the problem. We just need a way to compare this table to itself. Let's start by writing the basic query. I'm going to want to select all columns because I don't know what I need yet. And I'm going to get it from the SQL interviews dot worker table. Now I'm going to need a way to compare this table to itself. If we look back to question two, this isn't actually any different from comparing the worker table to the title table. What we need to do, what we need is every pair of workers such that the salary of the first worker equals the salary of the second. We can do that by joining this table with itself. Let's do that. We're going to join this table with the SQL interview workers table again. Since we're working with two tables, we're going to name them both. So the first table will be worker one, and the second table will be the worker two. And we're gonna add an on clause with our condition that the first worker's salary 
has to be equal to the second worker's salary. If you're watching closely, you'll see a problem though. Obviously, every worker has the same salary as themselves. We're going to need to expand our on clause so that worker 1 has, the, has, let's say, a different worker ID than worker 2. So we're going to add an and, and we're going to say that the worker 1 dot worker ID has to not equal worker 2 dot worker ID. Now when we run it, we'll get a table that has every pair where the workers have the same salary. Perfect. Amita and Vivek and Vivek and Avita. They both have a salary of 500,000. Now, um, now that we have all our information, I'm going to finish it by choosing my columns in the select. In this case, I'm going to want the first worker's first name, the second worker's first name, and the, sorry, come on, got to be a dot. And I'm going to want the salary of both workers. Obviously, since they have the same salary, I'm just going to use the salary of the first. And this is a valid solution to the problem. Our fourth interview question is to find the first five entries of joined contact and search tables. So, given the Airbnb contacts table and the Airbnb searches table, our goal is to join on an appropriate key and return the first five results. While this problem seems simple, it's still important that we ask um, that we bring along the interviewer. Let's look at the tables. So, first, looking at the Airbnb searches, and then I'll look at the Airbnb contacts. We'll immediately see a problem. While these two tables do have shared columns, check-in and check-out, these columns are not uniquely identifying, and so we can't join on them. We need to better understand these tables. In this case, it's best to ask the interviewer questions because we don't want to make any incorrect assumptions about the tables. So then I'll ask the interviewer, what does the Airbnb searches table represent? They'll say, each row represents the search of a user. DS represents the day of their search. ID user represents the user ID of the user. And DS check-in and check-out are when they wanted to check in and check out. And here's some just more information. Then Airbnb contacts represents <clears throat> in this table. Each row represents the contact between a guest and a host. So ID guest and ID host are the unique user IDs of the guest and host. ID listing is the unique ID of the listing. We have four columns representing the times of specific events, and we have rows representing when they checked in and checked out of the listing. Given that information, I'm ready to start to form a solution. We know that the users in Airbnb searches that are making these searches are the same users that are guests in Airbnb contacts. So that means that ID user and ID guest represent the same guest, and that's something we can join on. Let's start writing our query. We're going to want to select all of the columns from uh, the datasets.airbnb searches. And we're going to join that table with the datasets.airbnb contacts. We're working with two tables now, so I'm going to name the first one S for searches and the second one C for contacts. I'm going to write my on clause. From what we gained ask, um, asking the interviewer questions, I know that ID user and ID guest represent the same user, so I'm going to join on that. So searches.id ID user should equal contacts.id guest. I'm going to limit it because this is a lot of information. When I run this query, uh, we'll get a table where each row represents a search that eventually led to a contact. That's a valid um, solution to this problem, but we can definitely do better. Uh, to improve our query, we need to ask the interviewer what questions they're trying to answer with this data. One way to improve our query is to choose the correct type of join. So far, we've only been using inner joins, which return all the rows that have matching pairs. Um, we could also use something called an outer join if we want information about rows that don't have a match. I can show you this using the example of worker bonuses. So. <clears throat> Here, we have the worker table, which has workers, and the bonus table, which has the bonuses of the workers. If I join them such that worker ID equals worker reference ID, I should get a new table where we have the worker and their bonus information. The one problem, though, is that we don't have every worker in this table. Even if a worker doesn't have a bonus, we still want to know that. 
And so what we'll do is we'll use an outer join. In this case, we'll use a left outer join, which says for all of the rows in the left table that don't have a match, still return them, but with nulls. So now our table has, let me give it a second. Our table has all of the workers, and if the workers just didn't have a bonus, they get a null. So going back to our problem, if the interviewer is, let's say, only interested in, sorry, if, well, let's say, if the interviewer is only interested in matching the case where a search led to a contact, then an inner join would be appropriate. But if instead the interviewer was interested in knowing the ratio of searches that eventually led to a contact, then an outer join would be more appropriate. We would want to return all of the rows where a search didn't lead to a contact, so we would need to use a left join. For this problem, that is the case, so I'm going to use a left join. Another way we can improve our problem is by making our on clause more specific. We know that the Airbnb, the check-in and check-out columns are common between the two tables. It makes sense that by adding them to our on clause, we're going to, we will make um, our representation of a user's search intent more accurate. So obviously, some users will have multiple searches and multiple contacts. And if we only want searches that led to a contact, it makes sense that the times that they searched for should equal the times that they moved in. Let's add that to our on, our on clause. We're going to say that the search.dscheckin should equal the contact.dscheckin and the search.dscheckout should equal the contact.dscheckout. Now when we run this, um, we'll only have uh, pairs where the dates were matching. We only want five results for this problem, so I'm going to add a limit clause with five. And since we want all the, all the columns from this data, we can run this query and we have a valid solution. The last three problems show how important understanding the join clause is. It can be difficult understanding what's going on here. If you want to practice using SQL, I recommend joining Strata Scratch. In the bottom left here, you'll be able to choose from over 450 interview questions taken directly from real companies or have one randomly selected for you. If you have any questions about the problems in this video or about SQL in general, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to help you.